Oscilloscopes make great tools for power measurements when combined with current probes. In this example, we are going to show you how to combine math measurements, current probes, and the oscilloscope frame for making power measurements on a USB target system. I've connected an N2820 current probe, which uses sense resistor technology to a USB target system. I'm also going to connect to the same target system, a passive probe to monitor the voltage on the power rail. We are now looking at the current and the voltage on the USB power rail. As you can see, we have a very noisy signal, which is hard to take measurements on. We're going to first employ some band reduction techniques. Since I don't need the total bandwidth of the scope, the first thing I can do is add a analog bandwidth filter. You can see that this has made a dramatic reduction in the amount of noise on channel one. Since my waveforms are repetitive, the other thing that I can do is turn on analog averaging. Averaging is a great technique when you have repetitive signals to reduce the amount of noise. I now have a much better view of both my current and voltage with which I can make measurements. To make a power measurement, I'm going to utilize my math functions. Infinium oscilloscopes offer up to 16 math functions. They can also be used as gates. I'll turn on the first function as a instantaneous power multiplying my current times my voltage. Instead of seeing an overlaid waveform with current and voltage, I'm going to move my power function to its own grid. This makes it easier to make measurements on. If I wanted to see instantaneous power, I could simply drag and drop an instantaneous power measurement and see it in my results window. And the nice thing is that Infinium reports power in terms of milliwatts, knowing that it's connected to both current and a voltage probe. What if I wanted to see power over a single cycle? Let me go ahead and turn on a second function. This function we're going to assign as a gating function, and it's going to gate my power. When I turn it on, you can see a gate that's drawn. I'm going to, I can change where the gate is placed, left and right, or I can change the dimensions of the gate, and in this case, I'm going to make it equal to one cycle. The gated equivalent waveform, I'm going to pull it, go ahead and pull down into the third grid. What if I want to know the amount of power or energy that's consumed in one cycle? I can turn on yet another math function. It's nice that I have 16 to choose from, and I'll integrate the gated region. When I turn on this function, I'm going to drag it to the fourth grid again so it can dis be displayed independently. And again, if I wanted to find the maximum value of the integration, I can simply drag and drop a measurement onto it. And the amount of energy is reported in the correct radix of microjoules. So pretty neat. We learned how to use noise reduction to make it easier to see small signals that have noise on them. We learned how to use math to multiply current times voltage to show power. We applied the gated function to look at just one cycle, and then we did an integration over that cycle to determine how much energy was consumed. What if I was wanting to know how much charge was consumed in a single cycle? I can simply t change my gated region, and instead of having the gate operate on power, I can have it operate on channel two, which is connected to the current probe. If I then change that gate to operate over one cycle of current, you can see the resulting measurement is displayed as microcoulombs of charge. Pretty neat.